Hello everybody, today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to take a look at a very new lens by Sigma, the 50mm f1.2 DGDN art lens, which was recently announced. And we are joined by Mathan Sharon, a nature and wildlife photographer. Hello, Mathan. Hello, Ida. And uh, you have been using the Sony 50mm f1.2 for about two years, right? Yeah. And uh, so this, this is going to be a, a really interesting comparison. We had the lens uh, for only a couple of days, so it's it's not a real like in-depth review, but it's more of an experience or a hands-on review. Yeah, I got the hang of it. I got the feel of it. I can't say that it's you know I can I can't do a user review, but yeah, uh, proper. Yeah. We 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 also did the, all the regular uh, testing that we are doing here in the studio, and we took it for a day or two of uh, shooting in basically outdoors. And we got a little bit of uh, experience with the lens and how it handles. Uh, let's uh, start talking. I'm going to go over all the regular stuff. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about the, uh, I'll call them uh, uh, basically the, the more uh, experienced side of the lens. Mm -hmm. So in terms of like the build, uh, the lens has uh, 17 elements in 12 groups. Not that interesting, but we usually mention that. Uh, the Sony, I think, uh, has 14 in 10 groups, mm -hmm. so more elements, I know. But what it's worth, the Sony has three XA elements. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure about the, the Sigma, we didn't get the, the specific elements. By the way, we didn't get a uh, few of the specifications were not included. We got the lens before the announcement, so we're, we're not sure about a few things, including the price. We'll talk about this later on. So in terms of materials, the Sony, your experience with it, it's it's a composite material lens, like all the other GM lenses, right? right? Yeah. yeah. The the Sigma is metal. I'm thinking either some sort of other very lightweight metal, I don't know, aluminum or magnesium. They have uh, magnesium. Yeah. It's uh, it's uh, something that uh, Sigma started, I think, a few years ago using magnesium in their uh, lenses and I think maybe even in their cameras. They have uh, a few cameras. Uh, so that's it but both of them feel very robust I think uh, oh yeah yeah uh, you've been using your uh, 50 millimeter all over the place so. yeah yeah I had my lens with me uh, uh, everywhere yeah so yeah. it's it's Matan has been you know has been in uh, <laughs> yeah we talked yeah. about it in a different video but you've been in uh, volcano volcanoes in uh, Iceland and safaris in Africa and the Dead Sea here in Israel and all sorts of places uh, that uh, really stretch out the uh, gear to the max. Yeah, I know it's a common uh, thought of people that uh, 50 millimeter lenses are only so, good for portraits. But, no, you uh, can do I'm landscape using, and anything, yeah. I'm using mine for landscapes, I'm using mine for uh, woodlands, forests, and uh, I love it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wouldn't shoot birds with it. I mean, if you have something very, very close to you, maybe. But uh, yeah, <laughs> for other things. Uh, you can throw it at the bird so it flies. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's in terms of the materials. Uh, an interesting point, both lenses have very clear uh, elements. When, when you shake them, that, that's something strange that I noticed. Both the 50, the Sony 50 and the Sigma, if you shake them, you feel an element moving inside the lens. True. I yeah, feel it's, it's, it's kind of strange. I know it, it's, not, uh, it's not a problem. It's just, you know, uh, curiosity. Uh, so in terms of size and weight, I, I measured and weighted both lenses. So um, they're, I think, quite compact for 1.2 mil, uh, F1.2 lenses, mm -hmm. relatively both of them. The Sigma is a tiny bit longer. It's, I think, uh, I'm, I mentioned that about 12 centimeters or 4.5 inches, where the, the Sony is 11.5 uh, centimeters or about, I'd say just about also about 4.5. It's a little bit shorter, basically. Oddly enough, I could see it with my eyes. Yeah. I mean, I could, I no, could, but the uh, difference is not that big. The, no, it's not. The bigger difference, I think, and we'll talk about this, it, is with the hoods. The hoods make the, the Sigma a little bit larger, mm -hmm. but the lens itself is, is very marginally longer. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of weight, and that's, that's interesting, I think it's a, there is about, I would say, 50 gram difference in favor of the Sigma. The, the Sigma is actually lighter by about 50 grams. So the Sony is about 800 grams, and the Sigma is about 750, a little bit more, depending on if you're weighting it with the caps or without. Mm -hmm. it, it's not a big difference, and both lenses are not super heavy for what they are. I think. And now, in terms of um, the rings, that, that, there is, a, I would say, a 
pretty big difference between the the two lenses here. The the Sony the ring is very I wouldn't call it loose, but it's very it's it's not very tight. The aperture or yeah the, no the the, the the focus ring the focus the focus ring is very easy to turn. On the Sigma, you have a lot more resistance. Now I know. Uh, uh, you can tell me your we tested I've used your lens basically your lens if do you remember when you started using it the, did you have more resistance or it was like that the whole time then that's how it came the, how it, okay so the the sigma so you will know and the, the the viewers uh the sigma is much uh, more thick yeah exactly it's not a bad thing necessarily it's just different uh, you, I think you need to be a little bit uh, more careful with the Sony so not to turn it by accident. But uh, you, well, did it ever happen happened to you? No, yeah. uh, it did happen to me that the aperture ring oh, uh, yeah. got out of auto and I was ready to shoot. And, and, and you I, saw that and the it took me a second. exposure was not correct. Yeah, and then it takes you a second or two to understand that it moved and yeah. uh, you got to put it back. And that's an important difference because the Sigma has a focus or not a focus, an aperture or iris, whatever you want to call it, a lock, which mm -hmm. the Sony lacks. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, the new Sony, I think 50 millimeter F1.4, it was announced, I think, uh, last year, uh, does have a focus lock or mm -hmm. iris, uh, not focus, uh, iris lock, mm -hmm. which is nice. But yep. uh, the, the 1.2 doesn't. So mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a point for the Sigma. Uh, so that's the difference. The the Sigma also has, I think, thicker both focus and aperture rings. Mm -hmm. For what it's worth, it's a little bit more convenient, but you know, it's not a big deal. Uh, both of them feels very nice. And uh, now, in terms of buttons and switches, they're very similar. Both has autofocus, manual focus uh, switch, the focus hold button. Mm -hmm. Which do you use it? Do you program it for yeah, something? Yeah, mine, mine is program. For what? What do you uh, use? Mine is usually programmed to uh, minimum. Uh, uh, shutter speed auto ISO. Oh, okay. And uh, I have it set to to thirty thousand, thirty two hundred ISO. Okay. And then it's on aperture priority. Okay. And this way, I just uh, when I press it, I know for sure that uh, my shutter aperture is where I want. Okay. And my ISO would never pass thirty two hundred. Interesting. And I have it in all my all my lenses. Maybe I need to program it to something because I currently don't use it. But yeah. Um. Yeah. So all my lenses are programmed the same, the same way. The same yeah. way. So that's in terms of the the um, that bottom. You also have a D-click uh, bottom, which I don't think that you use much because you you don't shoot video. You shoot yeah. some video, but not. Uh, well, you, don't you don't need it. it yeah. Uh, so both of them use uh, have a D-click mode, and uh, the addition in the Sigma is the lock for the iris or aperture ring. So that's that's nice. Um, in terms of sealing, I think as far as I know, I, I didn't see that on the the specifications of the Sigma because we didn't get them. But the Sony is weather sealed. You use it in in the rain, right? You yeah, know? I used it actually. Uh, I think two weeks ago, I used it in a storm in in the forest. Uh, I spent and almost two hours in the rain. Yeah, so no problem. I, I didn't use the, I, I tested the Sigma, I didn't use it in the rain, but it should be like, I'm guessing all art uh, lenses. They are fine, yeah. Yeah, they're all uh, weather sealed. Uh, in terms of mounts, obviously the Sony is only E-mount full frame. Uh, the Sigma comes in both E-mount full frame and L-mount. Mm -hmm. And the L-mount, yeah, the L-mount uh, has a few differences. We'll talk about them a little bit later. Uh, the hood is very different between the lenses. The Sony has um, a flat, I don't know how you call yeah, it, it doesn't straight, uh, it has a name, I don't know. The Sony has a flat head, it doesn't wave. Yeah, exactly. The Sigma, is wavy. The, the Sigma has a petal uh, um, mm -hmm. pattern, basically. Uh, the Sony does have a, an interesting uh, addition. The front of the, the hood is uh, rubber, mm -hmm. so you can put it like straight to the on on a surface and it won't like uh, scratch it or anything mm -hmm. like that the sigma uh, you can put it on the surface i think it's it's flat enough basically but you don't have the rubber both of them by the way have um, a hood lock or hood release uh, yeah. bottom which is nice mm -hmm. uh, i think that the sigma only started this uh, relatively recently so that's uh, and the sigma is longer the, the petal one is, is like longer, so the lens is a little bit longer. Of course, you can put it in, in the bag like upside down and then yeah, yeah. it's not that long. Uh, the Sony has 11 aperture blades. I'm not sure about the Sigma. Uh, I'll write it maybe in the, in the article or in the text below uh, because I'm not sure. But 
Well, the, the we got it early, so the specs yeah. probably going to be out in well, yeah the day of the announcement. So we'll see. Both of them use a seventy-two millimeter front uh, filter thread. Yeah. Do you have a protective filter on yours? Uh, no, I don't have protective filter on, on, on any of your lenses. On any of my lenses. Okay, that's. Uh, uh, I do have my thread. Uh, I have my step-up rings for different sizes oh, uh, yeah. lenses. But I don't have protective. Uh, the Sony is a little bit like the lens itself is a little thicker, but the filter thread is the same, and I think that the front element is also about the same size. Yeah, yeah. to me it seems, but it's not uh, scientific. I no, didn't yeah, I didn't it. measure it, but it it looks more or less the same. But the the lens itself is a little bit thicker. They're both very robust. Very. Yeah. No, of course, it's the GM are all very robust, and the art lens, uh, the art series are, are also pretty robust. So let's talk about the performance. I think that's the more interesting part. We, uh, the, you know, the lens specifications you can read anywhere. So in terms of, let's start with focus. Uh, and I, I did a test. Uh, you didn't see me doing this. It was uh, uh, like a couple of days ago. But I basically tested um, what happens when you manually focus the lens if you can do. That's for video mostly. If it's repeatable. So if you're turning into a specific position and you that then you get back will the lens go back to the same position because all these lenses are fly by wire uh, mechanism so surprisingly uh, the, the all sigma lenses as far as i know don't have this capability so they don't get back to the same position but i was actually thinking that the sony does and it didn't so both of them don't have repeatable uh, focus in manual focus uh, changes basically uh so it is what it is if uh, I, you, you shot some video with it in, in the past yeah i did some yeah. video no the, the autofocus is great uh, for yeah. the sony yeah i've we are actually shooting video with uh i think that i'm uh, on the sigma and you're on the the sony right so the that, that is yeah so that's going to be like an interesting test for uh for both lenses in terms of like how the auto autofocus it's not like a very difficult, we're not moving that much, but still, you know, uh, right. if there are any jumps or anything in the video, that uh, then you're going to see it. Uh, so that's in terms of video. Now let's talk about the stills. That's, that's more interesting. And we tested it on the A1, mm -hmm. and that was kind of surprising. Uh, we did a running test, like I ran into the lens in, mm -hmm. in like uh, forward, basically. And like in high, like uh, 30 yeah. frames, per 20, 30 frames well, per second. Well, the Sigma is uh, limited, of ah, course. Yeah. That's, that's very Sony. important to say. The Sigma is limited on the Sony to 15 uh, frames per second, right. like all uh, third-party lenses on Sony bodies, which right. is a shame. But uh, talk to uh, Sony about that. <laughs> and uh, what, what did you get? All right. So with the Sigma, uh, I missed a lot of shots. Fortunately, yeah, uh, I was very surprised. Out of let's say like ten, more or less, how many were in focus? Uh, I want to say I missed. At the beginning, I thought it's fifty-fifty, and I did everything I could to like position like myself. Like at best, better. you got like seven out of ten. So I'd say yes. So I'd say seven out of ten was the best I've got. Yeah, but it can it can actually be lower. I I in some cases got like six out of ten or five even out of ten. Right, some of the bursts yeah. were. Yeah. So uh, the Sony, on the other hand, we tested I, it. I'm happy we did the test because uh, the Sony yeah. actually did. Yeah, it performed fantastically. Like I it, had ten out of ten. Yeah, it was on, great on multiple occasions. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking that this is we'll talk about this in the conclusion, but to me this is the biggest difference. Like the the ability to track moving fast moving subjects. I don't think that the, any third party lens is really capable of being like. On, on par with uh, with Sony in this one. Yeah, from my experience, um, they don't. Yeah. I think that this is the, on, the only the only part with, where Sigma, I'm not sure about Tamron, but Sigma for sure is lagging behind Sony is in, in this sort of... Uh, autofocus. Yeah. Uh, it's, not, it's not just regular autofocus because if you're shooting no, like... tracking. Yeah, tracking. It's not just even tracking. It's tracking fast-moving subjects. Yeah, so that's something I actually wanted to talk about. The way we tested it is you running towards the camera. Yeah, it's a very difficult. And uh, that's a lens that uh, people use, let's say, in a studio setup where there is a model yeah. and you move around. Well, it might perform better. Yeah, I wouldn't say that this... Yeah, we'll talk about this in I the conclusion. I would like to, to yeah. 
you know, test it more. But uh, I, I believe it could perform better on a different. Yeah, subject. on 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 less uh, f- like slower moving subjects and and subjects which are not moving towards the camera that fast. Right. Yeah, but you still see the difference to the Sony. It's not like the Sony didn't were wasn't able to perform in this that's, way. Yeah, that's correct. so that that's in terms of the, like the autofocus. But in general, I would say that the autofocus was pretty good. Like I shot with it like stills of either like people or like portraits or a lot of flowers and stuff mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. works very well mm-hmm. uh so for regular shooting i would say it's not it's not really a problem mm-hmm. so that's in terms of uh, the focusing let's talk about the image stabilization obviously we we always mention this but both lenses don't have built-in image stabilization so for what it's worth uh, in terms of sharpness and that's that's a test that we did here in the studio we mm-hmm. were i think that you specifically Specifically, we're kind of surprised, right? I was surprised. Yeah. The Sigma is sharper. Now, in the center, and I, I looked at the images after we did that, I looked at the images on the computer. The Sigma was a little bit sharper, wide open in the center, but the big surprise was in the corners. I was surprised. Yeah. The, the corners of, of the Sigma were significantly sharper at f1.2, and I would say that the Sony cached up or were able to to go up like at f i wrote it down i think it was like um i don't know like f4 something like that yeah f, between f2 and f f2.8 at, and f4 yeah at f2. and point... even and even at that it wasn't as sharp at the corners as, yeah, as a at, sigma so at it's f2. a surprise mm-hmm. at f2.8 it wasn't as sharp yeah here. now the the to be to be completely honest if you're using this for portraits not sure how important the corner are the corners are and the center is very close yeah. so you know it's it's not too much of a big of a big deal to me at least but you're shooting like landscape and other stuff with I it. actually had uh that's an interesting story uh with the sony uh last year we had a, a donation event for um uh, rescued birds okay and uh, some of the falconeers brought their birds birds or the visitors could see them and interact with them so we got to be really close to, to oh the so birds. you saw a bird all, all across the frame right so i i used my 50 millimeter at f1.2 just to show my friend something and i took the picture when you focus in the eyes and the nose is out of focus yeah the picture doesn't look so good yeah so in those situations sometimes you just want to stop it up you know you, yeah um, or stop down basically yeah stop, yeah. stop down so yeah can... lens usually you don't shoot landscape at f1.2 it's not you know right. it's shoot at f5.6 8 11 whatever yeah i yeah. find my lens the sharpest uh, is, is somewhere there at f8 uh... yeah I, I think i told you this before but uh on a different occasion but with faster lenses you would figure you would realize that they are sharper let's say 1.2 is very extre- extreme but even f1.4 it's not like ma- the maximum sharpness is usually not at f8, but much lower, like about two stops more or less. That's the like the uh, rule of thumb mm-hmm. uh, compared to the the, the widest uh, that the lens will go. So if it's 1.4, it will be like uh, f2.8, f4, something like that. That's why the Sigma caught me off guard because it was sharp. Yeah, it was very sharp wide at, open. At 1.2 at yeah. the corner. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and it caught me off guard. Yeah, it, it's it's very surprising. Uh, so that's uh, in terms of the sharpness. Let's talk about some other things. Uh, we t- we also tested the close-up sharpness again. I think that they're pretty this pretty much the same again. I think the the sigma is a little bit sharper, but uh, it's not. N- none of them are like really uh, close-up lenses, but the Sony's. I think both the the official. Uh, minimum focus dis- focusing distance i think of both of them is about 40 centimeters but i the, think the sigma is a little less this exactly so uh, even if the official one is the same as the sony uh, in practice i had to get the sigma a few centimeters closer uh, to the target to, to really reach like minimum focus distance with when shooting in manual focus mm-hmm. so that's that's important and uh, the the maximum magnification of the Sony is 1 to 5.8. I'm not sure about the Sigma. So uh, it's probably a little bit better So because because it can focus closer, I'm guessing. Uh, in terms of, I did, I did a test for breathing. Uh, so in, in the test, basically what uh, I discovered is that obviously the Sony on 
cameras that support the uh, breathing compensation yeah. they don't have any breathing the sigma has very little surprisingly very little breathing even without the compensation because obviously third party lenses don't compensate so it has very little breathing so mm-hmm. it will be interesting to see in, in this video now that we are shooting right. whether it is uh, like jumping and how the breathing works so that's uh, that can be interesting uh, in terms of chromatic aberration I think that you noticed a little bit of chromatic aberration in, some, in I, some of the shots I did on on the Sony on the Sigma or both? on the Sigma on the Sigma I know in our test actually I think that the Sigma performed better but it's a very specific longitudinal chromatic aberration test in real uh, life I know I have to look at the images and see if there is a big difference on the Sony, you worked with it for a long time. Did you notice chromatic aberration? Yeah, so on a very high dynamic range scenes, landscape Like with scenes. a lot of like uh, high high uh, lighting or uh, sharp uh, yeah, contrast when edges. Very, yeah, when you have very bright highlights meeting uh, dark shadows. You um, do see some yeah, either like purple the, or green. Uh, at the edge of the mountains, you know, you can see this kind of chromatic Wide open or uh, even uh, when you're closing you, down? Even when I'm closed down. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. But that's because of the dynamic range. Yeah, yeah. Because of the scene that I'm shooting. Yeah, okay. Uh, I did a flare test on both lenses. They seem to perform very similarly. Um, as usual, I, I usually say if, if you have the, the chance to be like in front of a very bright light source always use the hood as Mm -hmm. much as possible Mm -hmm. 50 millimeter usually don't suffer too much from flaring but you know Mm -hmm. again they're they're pretty similar Uh, in terms of vignetting this is we did the test but i don't think that you looked at the results i actually had a chance to look at the results Uh, i was kind of surprised both of them has have quite a lot of uh uh, vignetting wide open Mm -hmm. the sony more than the sigma Mm -hmm. Uh, again we're talking when the uh, in-camera compensation is turned off Mm -hmm. Uh, but the sony has more than the sigma Mm -hmm. and the sigma clears up much faster than the sony so that was surprising Mm -hmm. but again how important it is always just turn the uh, in-camera compensation on and you know you won't see it for for the most part Uh, in terms of barrel distortion we also test that Um, again when the compensation is turned off i would say both of them have a little bit of pincushion distortion yeah. you know you know yeah, i noticed that. i noticed yeah. the pincushion i noticed it to be very similar yeah again when turned off when yeah. turned turned off what turned off uh the bokeh again a, a test that we did i would say they're almost identical the the center wide open the center um bokeh balls seems clear on both lenses and round for the most part when you get a little bit away from the center, you start seeing like the oval cat eye mm-hmm. sort of uh, shaped uh, uh, circles. It's very hard to distinguish between both of them. I'd say that uh, both of them look good. In terms of like the, the separation from the background, I, I didn't shoot with the Sony that much, but for the, the Sigma, I really like the, the way that the background looks like um, it, it, it's sort of a little bit circular. In, mm-hmm. in, in, I know that's the light the, bokeh. It's like the 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 background, how the background shape looks when it's out mm-hmm. of focus. That's mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. It looks very nice. That's that's the only thing I can say. Again, I didn't compare it to the Sony, so maybe the Sony is exactly the same. Mm-hmm. But I would say that let, let's uh, I'll put some images that I shot uh, on the screen right now. I shot with A7R5, and uh, again, not a lot because you know we we didn't have a lot of time with it, but. I think that uh, we can also we can already go to some conclusions about the lenses. I'd say that they're very very similar, right? Very similar. I'd say the Sigma does have a little edge on certain things. Yeah, um, in terms of like sharpness and uh, uh, yeah, sharpness again in very yet, in very specific situations. Yeah, exactly. So sharpness and a few other things. The only big difference, if there is any, between the two lenses is when what we talked about like um, tracking autofocus, tracking, uh, autofocus on fast moving subjects yes. this is if this is really important to you if you you know that you're shooting like a lot of fast moving subjects go with the sony I if agree. on the other hand you're okay with like uh, you want a slightly sharper lens on the edges and you're shooting mostly i'm not sure why buy buy this lens just for like landscapes because you can no, you can buy a slow lens for that. You don't right. need to pay that much. But if you're shooting portraits and landscapes and you want one lens, 
then maybe the Sigma is the better option. And for portraits, if they're not moving very fast, I would say that the Sigma is, is good enough in terms of like uh, and nailing the focus. Yes. In, yeah. Again, it's uh, not a sports lens. Yeah, for but sure. But it does the work. It's sharp. Yeah. It passed the test. Uh, I was surprised, like I yeah. said. So. Yeah. In terms of uh, pricing, the Sony is 1900 I think, $1,900. The Sigma, I'm not sure. Uh, from what I was able to sort of uh, discern is like, I think around fifteen hundred. Not sure. again. Not sure. Check the um, the links uh, underneath this video and in the full article on Lensvid. I think that's uh, where you can find the the pricing. But if it's like probably a few hundred dollars less than the Sony, I think that uh, there will be quite a few people that will go for the Sigma. I'm not sure. Again, it it really depends on what you what you're going to do with the lens. No, the art line is an amazing line yeah. of lenses, and I know a lot of photographers that using uh, using, that the use, art line. using the art line, uh, professional lenses, absolutely robust, yeah. great, great stuff. Yeah. Um, like I said, if you are not trying to do sports and you want to shoot your dogs, you know, running for you in the forest, <laughs> your pets and all that, it it's fine. Yeah. Um, I, I shot my kid running towards me like the test that we have done. And again, I had the same uh, tracking issue. But if you're for models and, and people who are more stationary, that's, would like, that's good enough. I would like, yeah, I would like to keep using it uh, the few days that we have left. To see yeah, exactly. before we return again yeah. to, to see how it works, of course. Uh, so that's everything that we have for you. Uh, make sure that you look at all the test results that we have on uh, Lensbid on the full article. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much, Matan. Thank you, Ida. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.